and welcome to the Benjamin Zulu Show. Now we are told too much of everything, of something is poisonous. But surely, can loving someone overly be something really bad? Can you suffocate your partner? Is it, I don't know, I just, I don't know. Is it my show? Is it my show? Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> is this my show? I don't know. You're asking something that... We always think there can never be too much of a good thing, mm, it's you know. Just love. You know, and yeah. in, in, in reality, when you hear people saying "I love hard," <laughs> hey, <laughs> okay, uh, that they fall in love with their own. Everything. They try to make it sound like a virtue. It's not. <laughs> In reality, they are hiding lack of control and codependency. Uh -uh. Uh, and uh, how they shift to the loved one and they transport their whole emotional life to that person they love until it's like they are carrying you with them wherever they go and when they bend, you bend with them. <laughs> you are compromising when you love. You know, <laughs> it's okay to love with your own. It's okay to love fully. Yes. But you must remember the place of balance. Pruning, thinning, shaping, putting foundations right, and ensuring that you are not sacrificing yourself to remain in the relationship. Yeah. Now, when you talk about loving too much, I want you to remember the two things. Okay. It's love mixed with fear. When you love a oh. person and you are very afraid that they might go and that you can't bear them going mm. when you imagine the idea of facing to lose them the world stops you can't breathe you have anxiety attacks now those are the telltale signs of codependency. It's uh -huh. a big word in psychology. Okay. Uh, that means you become dependent on the one you love uh -huh. for your emotional well-being. Uh -huh. Okay. It's like you wear you you get into swallowed by that relationship until your happiness comes from the mood that is in that relationship. So if today you come up sulking, we sulk together. And you feel so terrified. What did I do? Could oh. I, could, is he living or thinking? Is he thinking, thinking of living? Is, 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 is he, what, what now? What, you know? And it, it feels like you love, the word hard doesn't go with healthy living, healthy loving. People love healthy can't use the word hard. <laughs> the word hard is, you know, it's trying too much. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's Tim Lahai who wrote a book called Women Who Try Too Hard. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about those who are, who are raised with people pleaser spectrum. Yes. And he was listing who are these. He was saying firstborn daughters and only daughters hey. are prime candidates. Oh, you fall in both places, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, he was saying not all, but he was saying that position predisposes you to be a peacemaker because you're very important in that family, your position is unique, you want to understand everyone, you don't have cares, you try to get any kind of truth, any kind of peace, you truth. Don't talk about me on <laughs> Why are you talking about me? You know, <laughs> and because many of the differences between family members are passed through you, you've learned how to somehow see everybody where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> you know? hey. Because of that tendency to... <laughs> <laughs> want to see and maintain peace somehow mm. it's it's a good thing to be a coffee and none of sorts yes. uh, but you don't look for peace at the expense of truth so you might become so driven to striking calm until you give people too many chances until you overlook the place to confront and correct ah. until you forget the boundaries of disengaging and saying, I will not have any of this. Because families, we never discard. We have to work together somehow. So if you are mediating family, there was no that option of I'm done with you. This is family. We somehow have to work together. So your default 
your your reconciliation framework does not have a disengagement clause we are family you carry that to the world yes. to love relationships if you are not careful <laughs> I wasn't told about this story. <laughs> I just showed up. <laughs> you know? So he was explaining how you end up being too much of a mediator. Okay. Another, another problem is the person who, 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 who takes the family leadership, the sibling who undertakes family leadership, when they become financially successful or academically successful, they be, when you rise and go ahead, you carry the name of the family. So you have to somehow hide the shameful side of the family by uh, paying by if the person uh, messed up some money needed, you pay quietly if something happened you compensate quietly quietly to keep the family name somewhat intact and mm. be careful that's an, a negotiation i had to do early in life when you come from big family you are forced to think <laughs> 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 and i realize many african families we we, we just share a history <laughs> It's the same. Not values. Mm. An ideal family mm. would borrow values from the parents or have their own. We are honest. We are hardworking. Mm -hmm. uh, one movie I was watching, they were saying the Mackenzies. The family was the Mackenzies. We don't borrow. They have a name to protect and they live by. Mackenzies don't take loans. We have to pay that right away. We, that, that, that's, not, that's not our name. And, uh, we, we, we do not defraud. We don't bribe. So you'd expect in an ideal family, the, 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 the name of us, the Odongos, yes. we don't do this. And that's our identity. That's how we are known in the world. Yes. But here in Africa, <laughs> we, have, we have a few who have concretized, and I'm hoping this generation will bring those values. Yes. You don't expect anybody from the Bill Gates to come fill bank loans. <laughs> <coughs> you know, yes. When they see anything Bezos, there's a name of uh, a child of Elon Musk that he was giving <laughs> the name of the child digits, mm. something harsh, air eh, twelve so things. <laughs> but the laws of the land don't agree those kind of things. Yes. <laughs> They're going to. So when you hear the Musks or maybe the Trumps mm. or the Obamas, there's something about that name, something we are known for. So. I, used, I came up with that naivety and uh, I was corrected somewhere along the way. Th the reality with many of our African families is different. And when you become the forefront of the family, you become a compensator for misdeeds. Mm. You have to cover mm. up dirty deeds mm. quietly. <laughs> because you are made to think they will also shame you. Yes. We carry one family name, so it's easy to, easy to identify. Yeah. Uh, this is my colleague's younger sister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 they call you, yo, uh, you, you know, your uncle has not paid the beer. That's a mathematics every African person has to do. Mm. Because of the conglomerated <laughs> nature of our families, mm. this and the other and the other and the other. Mm. And people want to. One of the top uh, artists I was told had a mother was drinking everywhere in clubs. Mm -hmm. And he would always be called to pay, and those guys would exaggerate the bill because she's drunk anyway. Ah. So he tried to look for a way to go a particular club and give uh, an amount per month. But because she's bragging all over, my son is on you're seeing on TV, that one, that's my son. <laughs> so do you know if the guy had to reach a point and make a very painful decision that I will no longer enable your behavior? I'll give you the amount of money I was supposed to give a healthy mother. Yes. You decide the life you want to live. Of course, she will have drunk it in two days. Yes. And go back to cursing, saying, my mother, my son abandoned me. It was very painful because he was singing nationally being celebrated. He was the son of a single mother. But the single mother is careless, drunk. It reaches a point when you are like that, you are the one ahead there. You're trying to compensate for mother. Compensate for So all the dysfunctional characters, they fall on your shoulder. Mm. So you become a people pleaser. Too much of a compensator for shame to cover up for shame. <laughs> yeah. Avoid. It, it's that is not an easy thing to do. So how do we overlove? We overlove when we have been conditioned from how we grew up to over accommodate, to lose boundaries, and we say the first position is that first born many times the first daughter, 
who becomes the de facto mediator mm -hmm. and who ends up being the one to balance the family and because families will never give up on each other they stay st they have to find truth so they are conditioned to get truth peace somehow 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 without a clause for if it's not working forget it yeah the second thing is that child who goes ahead male or female who manages to become the public image of the family because of success career and all that they feel a need to hide the shameful parts by compensating the misdeeds of the dysfunctional elements in the family mm. when you grow healthy i'll come to the solutions yes you you don't pick that burden from the word go <laughs> You start by deciding, I am on my own. I'm building my family. I am not protecting my family of origin. <laughs> yeah. It's too expensive to compensate for them. All I can do is build and help those who want to be helped. If people want to say, oh, we saw, you know, I saw another time they, they picked a cabinet minister. said, we saw this minister's uh, brother fallen. I'm wondering, why are you quoting somebody's brother? You see, your sister or your brother won't submit to your authority. Yes. They can lead their life and be whoever they want. They can mm -hmm. be a criminal when you're mm -hmm. a preacher. That is true. And we, we share father, family name. Yes. So, and I like the way the minister was unbothered. Very because they know even you who are writing, you have siblings who would have shared him. Yes, like, w w find him and ask him those questions you're asking. Me. <laughs> <laughs> that was his reaction. Was like, just, just find, find them. I mean, hmm? because that's not even my child. And even when it's a child and it's an adult, they can mm. still go their own way. They were never my subject. We simply were bred in the same nest and people picked the path. Mm. And uh, in Africa, I don't need to explain that because we all know what we have at home. Yeah. <laughs> mm. We always have them called the brothers, sisters, sisters, have somebody. There's, something, there's, something, <laughs> there's always, <laughs> you know? Yes. So you have no moral authority to attack my case when you have yours yeah. <laughs> in your backyard. Yeah. So the third condition where we over accommodate and over love is when we have previously suffered loss of love and we blamed ourselves. Oh. Uh, one girl said, uh, imagine she's only 25 and she has been in a relationship for seven years. And she said we broke up and it was my fault because I kept blowing up anchor. I have run processed childhood trauma. I say, this time you got into a relationship, should, you should have been healing, you dummy. Mm. This was a period for healing, not dating. You could not laugh when you're bleeding. So many people, uh, because past relationship, they were left like they failed. Now they have a duty to make this one work. That's what the problem with Samson. He left, he lost the first woman, and he had a duty to keep the second one to prove that he is also a man he can mm -hmm. keep a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how he got killed. Yeah. So overloving is an oxymoron. It is a hidden, it's a blanket. Um, it's a term we are using to hide the real vice. Okay. Okay, okay. Of, of accommodating, of lacking boundaries, yeah. of assuming the person's misdeeds. So you know you're over loving, so to speak, as we are using it today. Yes. When you love a person too much that you can't stand up to them when they're hurting you. Ha. Huh. And this is prime for those mediators of the family. And as I told you, family, African families are funny. You may find that. The, the middle, the firstborn daughter or the firstborn son is the center. And everybody else is revolving around them. Mm. The parent and the siblings. So they're the ones who communicate. Major communications and major decisions, major changes, reconciliations and <laughs> everything. So they learned to keep things moving. To hold everyone. To remove those people from that position is difficult. Yeah. Because they fear it will crumble. In the past, when they were away for a month mm -hmm. somewhere, they came back to find chaos. Somebody is talking to each other. Mm. Payments are falling behind schedule. Mm. Somebody is sick, has not been treated. Mm -hmm. So they know what can go wrong with their hands off. And it is not their family. They just born there. It's unfortunate how our parents become emotional dependents of their children. They, they vent about how their partner is behaving to the children. And they pick one particular child. To become a close friend. That is not close friend, it's enmeshment. <laughs> it's not a healthy friendship. So that you talk with your, your mother one conversation and now you are so heavy, I have to start medicating you. We can't talk our issues now for the rest of the evening. You are troubled <laughs> by the things you are being told. It's not friendship, it's dependency. There's no time they carry your burdens. You're always one carrying the burden. Many of them married wrong and you are not there when they married. Yeah. And now you have to carry to bear all those consequences because of the wrangles and conflicts.
To, to learn, the solution is to learn, you transfer the same pattern to your partner, who you try to execute truths, you don't, need no, don't know when to say no, you're afraid very much of conflict, because again, when you come from that kind of family, you want to have at least a peace where you come from. Your own family should be peaceful, so you can't mm -hmm. afford, when you're the one uh, reconciling people, to also need reconciliation. <laughs> you overdo. <laughs> you overlook. Yeah. You overaccommodate. Yeah. You've never learned how to challenge and say no. Listen, it may not look like it's a major problem when you are being the family leader and you are getting married. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you have been the leader. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect you to learn how to manage your own life. <laughs> and uh, they continue expecting your assistance even when you have started your own family. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so you may unconsciously marry when there are gaps. There are gaps with the person you are marrying and the relationship you are entering into. But you've always handled the situations. And <laughs> they never worry you that much. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have an experience. And <laughs> we'll always we can always understand each other. <laughs> Healthy love relationships are different from family because they only function when they are ultimatums. One more time. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Love relationships are different from family because family was blood. Yes. And we are there. We may find we are committed. But loved relationships have no crossing lines. Have lines that if you cross this, I'm out. Yes. That was not present in family. And because you learned your mediation from family. <laughs> you transfer the same. You never learn to draw the lines. Yeah. And even with the family, you're supposed to be able to draw lines. And say, we can share name, we can share history, we can share parents. But there's something I'll not tolerate. But it's not taught. We are taught, you know, that, that is still your brother at the end of the day. At the end of the day, that is still your sister. You know, I see your mother. That is still your father. At the end of the day, go, 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 go. So we perpetuate pathology and pain and dysfunction. Lack of boundaries. Huh. And then, every time you have a milestone, it's them you are calling all of them. They are full of envy and jealousy. They go bewitching you and saying words that keep crack, heart you and but because there's still family you continue doing it because somebody told you there's still family after all family doesn't mean friendship some people sometimes people have, have, have biology but no chemistry <laughs> you share genes but you don't share vision don't share heart <laughs> you know so if you come to marriage you need to have learned how to draw the lines and say this is the minimum i can accept we are coming here out of consensus we are not bound at the hips we don't share blood <laughs> we are coming here because of chemistry and, co and covenant and agreement and commitment if it reaches a point that you are uh, take, looking down on me, no, excuse me. I can happy. I can be happy alone. Yeah, that's foreign language to mediators. Very foreign. <laughs> I'm still really looking at you, <laughs> wondering. Everybody would look at me funny. <laughs> that is very foreign yeah. to peacemakers of the family. <laughs> so, <laughs> but if you don't learn it, people will learn. People will. People have a sixty cents mm. that uh, <laughs> you have no boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! People have a sixty cents of knowing you can always forgive. Mm. Forgive. The second rule: uh, how to handle why you end up overloving. So you you overlove when you are conditioned to accommodate too much yes. and not to stand up for a person who's hurting you. The second problem is when you are taught to put other people in front of yourself. Mm -hmm. To be sacrificial, not to be selfish. Self-loving in family is called selfish. Mm -hmm. When you start with yourself, mm -hmm. you should give the children first. Serve mm -hmm. others first. Here you eat last. Mm -hmm. No, let them eat first. It's okay. Me, I'm okay. I'll sleep. I am okay. So you, because you are made to put others first, first, and you come to love with the same mentality. In love, you, you pick your lover from the world. You don't pick them from home. Are we together? No, you don't. Yes. And because you're, because you're picking them from the world, there are rules that operate in the world. The first rule is when you put yourself, when, when you put others first, you teach them that you're okay coming second. Yeah. So you, you, you establish a tilted relationship where you never measure how much you're being taken care of. You measure by how much you're taking care of. Other people. Oh, yeah. Okay. You end up forgotten, overlooked, ignored. Mm. But as long as there's peace. We're good. Why are we rocking this? So you never cherish, mm. not put 
celebrated. You know, and, and you, you come second, they end up not thinking you actually, you don't think you deserve that much. Because expecting to be treasured, expecting to be friends, told things first, included first, mm. consulted first, talked to first, greeted first, those small things that make our emotional lives good, you put second, second, second. I discuss things with my colleagues. I come to tell you later when you have decided and implemented. <laughs> I buy things first, inform you later. You see, you see uh, certificates there. I bought a property. Yeah. You see things there. You see, find a car in the parking lot. <laughs> hey. I mean, you hear from outsiders. Yes. That my, uh, I hear that my wife has brought a lot of things. Uh, has bought things for her parents, mm -hmm. and she's my wife, and I'm hearing it from her brothers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they are commenting in mockery mm -hmm. because they know I don't know. Yes. <laughs> you know, because without knowing, I learned being comfortable taking back seat. The difference is, in the family, I was doing that to maintain peace. Mm. In this relationship, dynamics are different. We are supposed to be together. And if we are not together at par, it won't work. Yeah. How then does that end destroying the relationship? You come to realize I don't value you that much, and you, you are convinced you don't know where it's coming from, who is allowing it. You become resentful. You become, eventually begin to see I don't value you that much. And you begin to, 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 you, because again, let me tell you the that why people have a love. Mm -hmm. There are people who have sworn that they will never, uh, they saw divorce from their uncles or grandfather, grandfather or somebody and they will never allow it. They were brought up by one parent and they don't want the children to bring yes. under one parent. Yes. So they came with all philosophies of outsiders and history to impose it on a mm. marriage that has no relationship with where they're coming from. Mm. On a union that has an, uh, another character who has their own mind and will to make whatever decisions they want. Whether you are coming from a lineage of... Uh, <laughs> I've had that statement so many times. Before you before. swear with your grandparents, remember the person you are marrying has nothing to do with your grandparents. Yes. Doesn't even know them. These are the vows I want you to make. I want you to swear that you shall always be a happy woman. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Don't swear that you'll always be married. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can promise to always be an available father. I can swear that I'll always be forthright and honest. The things that are fully in my control. And when I'm married, I'll be true and honest and faithful. That's what I can promise. As to my partner, I hope hey, <laughs> they reciprocate the level of commitment. Yeah. That's what will make the marriage work. It takes two to tango. If they don't play their part, I'm, I'm sorry. It will not work. And to me, what matters first is peace and happiness. If I get it in marriage, that's what I want. If I can't get it in marriage, I'll get it alone. <laughs> Not the status of being... Mm -mm. You know, mm. Many churches, you need to be married to be given positions of leadership. Uh -huh. If you divorce, you'll be demoted from mm. many, many, many positions. It's not a good picture to the church. That, the story of the pastor. You know. Yeah. And I want you to have a life. <laughs> That does not require you to be promoted or demoted by people. Mm. <laughs> that sounds so nice. I like it. <laughs> I want you to have a little happy life. Yes. That is fully yours to dictate. I want you to have some money. Have a way to make your own friends. Have, have an energy and competence and skills. And that small life that gives you happiness and is fully in your control. So that if at work they promote you at church, they excommunicate you at... <laughs> <laughs> I want you to have a life that is fully in your control and you can bask there. Yeah. It's so important for you to buy, to get your own small spaces, a room, a small car, some shoes, some <laughs> the things that make you feel good. You need to have that spiritual walk with God. God is one person who will never leave you. And when you have a way to find peace there, it will be very comforting so that when your partner 
begins to misbehave and threatening you as if divorce is death. You tell them, excuse me. I was happy before you found me. Yes. And you will not take away my happiness. Yep. In fact, there's no, there's no relationship that is worth sacrificing your happiness for. Let me repeat this again. The, 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 the teacher said, when you are stressed, you can be creative. When you are in turbulence, you can be productive. Mm -hmm. Your mind won't focus on your calling when you are crying. When you are quietly crying, you won't attend to your calling. When you are slow puncher, stressed, heavy, crying, weighed down, the one sign that relationship is useless is when it's causing you tears years after years. And you keep hoping for change and this and never happens. Remember, you can lose people and replace people, but the years you're losing are irreplaceable. That is true. Time gone is gone. Gone, gone. So you're saying how this ends up finishing is become bitter because they take you for granted. Yes. They put other people first. Yes. And I know I'm marrying somebody who has a father, but I don't expect their father to come before me. Mm -hmm. If your father is the most important person, don't get married. You already have a man in your life. <coughs> <laughs> the Bible said you should be able to leave <laughs> so that you can cleave. <laughs> And if you don't feel like you can adjust your life to accommodate me as number one in your life, yeah. the person you consult, you talk to when you're in stress, yes. the person we do life with, yes. there's no point of harassing me by giving me a subordinate position of quasi-partner <laughs> when I am only there. <laughs> Then I'm only here to ratify decisions already made yes. <laughs> between you and your daddy, and you. He is popping up everywhere. I, he is not a competitor to me in terms of sex or life or no, 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 But no, no. influence, he's the one the most influential to you. I don't have a partner really. <laughs> I only here to uh, be told, be reported to. Yes. And you're talking for hours, and I can't reach you on phone because you're on phone with the dad every time. Even the dad must be a very sick person <laughs> to, <laughs> to say. <laughs> I don't, you guys. <laughs> I don't want I don't want me coming second, even to your dad, even to your mom. Me coming second. And me hearing you are with your ex somewhere or somebody. Sometimes mm. when you're a child, sometimes you marry people and they have a child and that child is in between you. They are made very important. And you're made to give away when the child is around. <laughs> you know? So you, 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 you end up causing me to be resentful and to disconnect. And with, before you realize it, we are strangers. Now, when you have a love me, so afraid, although I, I do want to question you, but I can see I don't, I'm not the most important person to you. I love my wife so much, I, I have decided to understand. That's how many use it. I decided to understand her. <laughs> so understood, understood, understood until I unlove you. I realize I'm not important to you. Yeah. You have your own life. So what did I, what happened? I, I overloved, overloved, overloved until I unloved. I accommodated, accommodated, accommodated yeah. until I broke. Yeah. I understood, understood, understood until I no longer want to hear anything about you. The conclusion, if you overlove a person, you will mount up with bitterness and resentment and it will lead up the emotional connection and because you are no longer expressing yourself and you are no longer adjusting to stop hurting you and you are no longer getting a good deal and you continue understanding and being patient and waiting, at some point you will break. Even those who are long suffering are not forever suffering. At some point you get tired of it. Yes. yes. Your lesson. Oh. You make me and probably a whole other people to just question some of the things that we've grown up hearing and not hearing. Exactly. And Thank nobody you. saying these things to us. <laughs> we <laughs> need to conclude this because our time is up. And you've said this before, that we should not be dating someone that we cannot imagine losing. Exactly. And that loving hard, hard, is unhealthy. So is it love or is it obsession? Yeah? So... Healthy love allows for you to express to each other how you wish to be treated. So if you dare not bring up such a discussion, perhaps it's because you know that they do not love you and you are petrified 
of them just walking away. They're your secret idol, and as a rule, gods are not to be challenged. They are to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Think about that. That's all we have for you today. Thank you.